What's going on, Reject Nation? So if you guys didn't see it, we've just put up a uh, reaction and review right out of the theater for A Quiet Place Part 2. And in that video, I mentioned how there was a Q&A held right after the screening, moderated by J.J. Abrams, and it was interviewing John Krasinski. And during this live Q&A, uh, there were some social media questions read aloud, and the real rejects were the first ones read aloud. I was like, oh, whoa, that was surprising. And then our, our buddy, Aaron Alexander, who you might have seen in our Invincible uh, reactions and Shang Chi. He asked a question there, and uh, just for just for some giggles, I threw in late to the party, friend of the real rejects. I threw in their question because I, I think you guys would get a real hoot out of that one, real kick out of that one. So yeah, the whole Q and A was like thirty plus minutes or something like that. But I just wanted to share these three with y'all. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, how amazing was that movie? Oh my god. I'm so jealous we got to watch it uh, in an actual theater. And by the way, uh, let's just real quick hear it for theaters. It feels so good to walk into a giant space, uh, smell the popcorn, kind of have a, an audience here. I know it's not full capacity, but uh, it's so beautiful to, to see all of you and to be back in a theater. I'd like to introduce someone who uh, you're really excited about seeing. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of a movie called White Place 2, Mr. John Krasinski. Hey everybody! Woo! Standing ovation. That's the respect I deserve. I can't even joke about that. My mom will disown me. Ladies and gentlemen, J.J. Abrams. John Krasinski. Uh, that's it. That's all we wanted to say. Thank you right. so much. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask you some questions. I have a few questions here, and then we'll take some questions from anyone who has a question. Is it bad that I'm nervous? That you're nervous? Yeah. You're, the movie's done. Oh, got it. Perfect. Great. Um, I'm no longer nervous. I think that you have made uh, like a masterwork here. Like, Whoa. It's such a brilliant Whoa. movie. Um, you got some questions. Uh, should, do you mind if I ask, ask you some questions from uh, You can answer questions, Twitter? too. I would love you mind if I, I already yeah. answered these already. <laughs> That'd be so disappointing. Um, what the hell? Okay, the real rejects ask, was there any pressure to go bigger in the sequel when so much of the first one is about keeping it contained and subtle? I'm not done. How did you handle raising the stakes without dot 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 raising the volume? Question mark. Ooh, very nicely worded question. Um, this sequel is much bigger and much scarier, but not by my intention as far as I did not set out to make it bigger or scarier or any of those things. What I did was, all I kept thinking was, how do you organically continue this story? Because I know that the secret sauce is in these characters and in this family. And if you love these people, you are going to be so terrified to see anything happen to them, whether it's stepping on a nail it, or, um, <laughs> or whatever it is. It's, it, it was about these characters. And so once you take away the safety of that ecosystem, the intimacy of that family, that strength that they had, and they have to leave, you quite literally get to the end of the path. And then every single step they take from there on out might be their last. So once we got to that part in the movie, it immediately got bigger organically because it's, you're just more worried for this family and then they have to go to new places and they're going to uncharted places and places where people have plans for them and things like that and so it just started to get bigger organically and that's when I just listened to the story I just knew that if we could make every set piece that was big big because you can logically see it that way then we can go there so good again I, I I'm very jealous of everyone here because I got to see it in the theater I was watching it at home and went insane over it and I just kept thinking this is the kind of movie you really want to see in a theater you know there's a showing in about 25 what? minutes <laughs> but 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 full of strangers and screaming together I mean it, it is the thing that I so deeply miss about this this last you know year and a bit uh, let's take some questions from this spectacular group of human beings yes. who are in this theater right now yes right here oh thanks JJ. <laughs> you obviously know each other. <laughs> um, as someone who's aspiring to make films myself one day, I have a dream project I want to make where I'd like to star in it. It takes place over the course of a year. What is the process like of starring and directing yourself in a movie? This person wants to star in and direct a movie. What is the process, John Krasinski? <laughs> Call Bad Robot. And... <laughs> um, I, I have a weird thing because I started as an actor first, and so I take great comfort in writing and directing, which, as I'm saying it now, sounds very pretentious. 
the reason why is when you're in the movie you're directing, you're with the actors, and so it almost feels more like a play. And so without sounding too heady, when certain actors like everyone in this movie, it starts doing what they're doing, you can actually feel it's almost like something's rising off the floor and it's kind of conjuring itself. And the last thing you want to do is go, cut, and then it all falls to the ground and you come out and you go, can you just tilt your head a little more that way? That's great for actors, they love that. Um, <laughs> so being in the scene with them allows me to give a note very quietly. And so, for instance, when I was working with my wife, I'd give her a tiny note and she'd do it right there in the moment. And so the magic was always around us. And so it almost felt more like we were doing theater and that we couldn't cut. And so you'd keep going and, and it feels really, really, um, special when you do that. And then the other thing, to be really honest, is logistics, as he knows, is, for instance, in the first movie, when I go up to the um, silo and I'm lighting the fires, we had, I think, seven and a half minutes to shoot that shot before the sun went down. And in that seven and a half minutes, just looking for an actor, I'd lose it. So as soon as, as, soon as they were like, you have seven and a half minutes, I just went, <laughs> and started crawling up the silo, and I already knew the note I wanted. I knew which camera we were using, and so I got up there and was able to shoot it in seven and a half minutes. But it would be hard to, to sort of grab an actor, give them a note and all that while the sun's going down. Mm -hmm. um, Good luck with your movie, by the way. Late to the Party asks, uh, besides Kevin, for obvious reasons, who from Dunder Mifflin would survive the longest in your silent post-apocalyptic world? Well, we both have to answer this, because I don't know, I'm sure you know, J.J. Abrams directed The Office. Well, I did an episode. No, please. No, uh, all of them. I did all of them. Uh, you know, it's a good question for you. I mean, listen, it's an easy answer, but uh, everyone thinks I'm going to say Dwight, and that's not true. Definitely Creed. Creed would find his way into a rabbit hole and just wait it out that's and eat right mung beans and have a good time. That's the right answer. Where did you um, get the socks? They're excellent. Oh, the, the socks are on full display, I know. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm, fantastic. My long legs are just sort of they're, they're, just... I'm they're good. To no, I'm a fan. Well, it's Ilaria Urbanati, my stylist, who basically took me out of the world of sweatpants for a very long time, and she's got six sock game. Well now. done. I will say this. Um, it is incredibly hard to do what you made look effortless. Wow. Uh, and you, you've made a movie that, uh, yes, it's a horror movie, but you, it shouldn't be categorized like that. I think it is uh, a, a movie about family and... Uh, about being tested and like the great, you know, films that we all love that inspired you, the films by Spielberg and Hitchcock and, and many others, uh, you've taken something and, and you've, you've done kind of the impossible, especially given that it is, it is a sequel, which I would argue is, is a better film even than the first, which I loved. I think you've, you've made a movie that just touches the sort of primal place in us and for audiences who are used to so much um, and has seen, have seen so much, you've really done something that is remarkable and you made it look so easy. So I commend you and congratulate you. And uh, to anyone who is watching who's not seen it, Quiet Place Part 2, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all for coming out to the theaters. It means so, so much to all of us. So thank you. 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 Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.